Yeah, so I think we can start our webinar. So hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all for joining us now. My name is Elena Grinyuk, and I'm Regional Manager for the Central Eastern Europe at the SME Banking Club, and I will be your host today. And today we speak about factoring uh, trends and forecasts for this year. And I'm very uh, glad to be joined by three speakers, uh, which uh, let me introduce them. So, Karol Leszczyński, Product Manager at Komarch, uh, Pavel Kacprzak, Board Member BNP Paribas Factoring in Poland, and uh, Łukasz Adamczyk, Microfactoring Product Owner at ING Bank Śląski in Poland. So, hello and thank you for joining today. Hello, thank hello. you for, hello, hello, hello. for the invitation. <laughs> hello, everyone. So, before we uh, go to the topic, let me mention some organizational moments here. So our webinar is scheduled for half an hour, but we are ready to stay here till we answer the very last question you send us. So please uh, don't hesitate and I invite you to tap your questions into the chat. Uh, the format of uh, today's webinar is a panel discussion. So I have prepared my questions to our panelists and after that we will be ready to answer yours. And we are recording this webinar. So right after we finish, you will receive the link to the video. Uh, so, uh, let's go to the topic. Um, the situation that we have right now looks positive for the factoring industry. And if we talk about um, SMEs, so the delays of payments from the counterparties has increased the awareness of the factoring as a product among the entrepreneurs. And uh, the key factoring words uh, in Google search have seen a 40% increase in the traffic from the mid of March. And uh, actually, I saw recently a forecast of um, cumulated annual growth rate for the global factor and industry for this year, 2020, and at the level of 7%. So my first question will be to the whole panel. So do you see uh, the increased demand for that product in your companies and in the Polish market in general? Uh, Pavel, would you start? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Well, to be honest, it's quite interesting uh, situation because I still remember 2009 and when, let's say, last crisis started. And that was quite a similar situation because factoring became a bit more, always more popular in unsafe times. Uh, this is very, very good information for us because uh, still, by far, most of our new clients are the clients who use factoring for the first time in their history. So it's not like we take over clients from other factoring companies. Uh, we still have to educate and learn and, and show to our potential clients that uh, factoring can help us, uh, can help them. Uh, so, so it's still still education. So it's very good to know that the companies look uh, are looking for for the information about the factoring by themselves but to be honest with this coronavirus it's like okay we do see interest but not that much in terms of uh, demand from the from the clients first quarter of the of this year was for our industry still very strong that was 30 percent growth year for over year especially march was very very strong uh, but now we know that companies were kind of gathering uh, cash to be prepared for the worst times. Then we have quite a big uh, decrease in the uh, in, in, in the turnover. So um, I'm afraid that as factoring is very closely connected to new sales, then uh, as new sales of our clients decreased, uh, also the the turnover of clients uh, decreased. We also made a survey among our clients, 1,000 clients approximately, and uh, the outcome is that we have uh, we can see two groups of, uh, of, of 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 companies. First of all, corporate clients. They did struggle a bit, but I would say that the situation is under control. They are already preparing to come back to uh, business as usual. The sales are growing a bit. And then there is a SME clients groups, which I must say they not even able to, uh, to, to guess what's going to be the nearest future, not even mentioning like, you know, uh, next year. Uh, there's big uncertainty among these clients. Uh, they don't have that much uh, cash reserves uh, by themselves. So 
Okay, there is an interest, but unfortunately, I would say, at least from our point of view, so more like corporate SME clients, uh, still, first of all, the new sales uh, should move, which is already slowly but surely happening. And then uh, definitely the, the demand will also uh, go after. Mm -hmm. And Lukas, how the situation looks like in ING Bank? Um... Yeah, well, well, first of all, um, I'm very happy that the awareness of uh, factoring is growing among companies in Poland. Um, as uh, Pavel rightly indicated, uh, the education is uh, uh, crucial for, for, for factoring nowadays. Uh, at ING, we, we, we paid great importance to, to financial education of uh, small entrepreneurs uh, from whom factoring is not an obvious choice. Um, that is why we create educational materials in, in a simple and accessible form, uh, create case studies, explain the benefits of uh, financing invoices, and uh, have our own blog where ING experts discuss interesting matters. Mm, at the same time, I believe it, it is completely different thing to, to, to have knowledge of the factoring market and to be able to benefit from this form of financing. Um, the key driver of interest uh, to, uh, at today's it, in factoring products seems to be the, the limitation of access to, to other more familiar forms of financing, um, such as lending or, or leasing. And frankly speaking, the real client attention um, to microfactoring, uh, which mm, strictly translates into sales, is similar to the pre-pandemic period. Um, however, I'm speaking on behalf of a person who deals with microfactoring clients where the most likely client is, is a sole entrepreneur or, or, or small company, which has uh, significantly different financial needs from, from those of, of medium-sized enterprises segment. And as, as, as Pavel mentioned, as, uh, and as, as probably every, everyone uh, who, who are interested in, in the Polish factoring market, uh, first quarter uh, this year was still better than the same period last year. Uh, the increase, um, I would say, uh, was uh, several percent. Um, uh, in turnover, of course. Uh, however, for sure, uh, second and third quarter will see a decre decrease in turnover compared to the previous year. And, and, and the entire factoring uh, business uh, faces this challenge. So, um, to sum up, in my way of thinking, in the micro factoring segment, whether ING on, on, or our competitors, it should be. Um, little easier uh, to return to the growth path uh, than factoring companies uh, targeting larger clients, um, provided, of course, that they will have sufficient financial resources to survive in the market uh, during the, the, the worst economic slowdown. Mm -hmm. I see. Thanks. And Carol, uh, what is your feeling and, and maybe which feedback do you hear from your factoring companies, from, the, from your customers? I think that in the era of pandemic, uh, many banks changed their approach uh, to financing enterprises. For example, the procedures for granting loans were tightened. But slightly different approach was used in the factoring, uh, where transactions are secured by payments from contractors or maybe insurance company. And um, in my opinion, uh, this approach gave positive uh, results because companies' awareness of factoring has increased significantly. Uh, customers began to notice the additional benefits of a factoring contract uh, besides financing, uh, such as, for example, debt collection on the side on the factor. And in this case, the customer can focus on their current operations, uh, not on recovering money. Yeah? and other benefits, for example, is taking over the risk of on contractors' insolvency. And in addition, uh, banks or financial institutions that didn't uh, fully specialize in factoring began to notice uh, the value of this product 
and those the possibility of gaining new customers thanks to the safer financing than traditional loan. So also the queries uh, regarding uh, to the system presentation on conversations about solution we offer, in my opinion, have increased in the recent week. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's actually talk a bit about the, the risk approach. Has it changed uh, now after after the lockdown? So are there new uh, approaches for the um, underwriting of new customers and working with the existing portfol portfolios? And do you have, uh, uh, Pavel and Lukas, some restricted sectors that you don't finance, for example, uh, right now? Lukas, let's start with you this time. <laughs> Uh, we can't hear you. Just now. Yeah, it should be uh, now much better. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, let's say, several um, branches, uh, industries, which are, let's say, on our um, watch list. Uh, however, generally speaking, um, we financed uh, all the industries uh, nowadays. Yeah. Mm hmm so in the risk or underwriting approach, no changes at the moment? Yeah, it, it changes a little bit, um, but uh, it's not a crucial change for our risk assessment uh, uh, algorithm, I would say. Okay. Okay. And Pavel, what is the situation? How do you treat it in the BNP Paribas? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a quite funny situation because I cannot hear what you is telling so please forgive me if I sell this uh, talk the same but maybe it's some BNP Paribas issues that I cannot hear colleagues from competition I don't know for, for some reason I cannot hear Lukas uh, so so forgive me so in in case uh, in in terms of risk uh, risk assessment uh, first of all we uh, we have uh, we introduced factoring holidays uh, this is the program under which our client can apply for uh, delay uh, repayments of the of the uh, invoices that we already issued or we already financed uh, from our clients and surprisingly only three percent three percent of our clients applied for such holidays 99 percent of this uh, applies were, were approved so i'm quite positively uh, surprised that uh, so little clients uh, were applying at all we do have a group of clients uh, that we take care take closer look uh, these are the clients who work in uh, textile and shoe producers uh, that would be part of the transport uh, industry uh, horeca suppliers and uh, and automotive in this case we uh, we just approach them and and uh, talk about the, the the plans how we could uh, together survive uh, with them till the moment that uh, that the cuts uh, the, the the lockdown is over uh, none of the clients was uh, was cut off from financing uh, that would be stupid here yeah, we, we would have snowball effect uh, so so they still financed and uh, we're waiting for for new sales to to grow it's slow but surely uh, going on the situation is that as uh, beginning as, as we are very closely connected to new sites of our clients we have a bit of a uh, limited possibilities to put more liquidity uh, to our to our clients but we do definitely could help our clients with uh, purchases from their suppliers uh, there is quite a lot a lot of uncertainty between the the companies not all, none of not all of the suppliers want to sales with trade credit right now uh, some of them just want to cash payment and in this situation definitely reverse factoring would be uh, very suitable uh, but with reverse factoring it's uh, it's much much more risky compared to reverse factoring uh, which is our uh, main activity, uh, activity, let's call it. But in this case, uh, BGK Bank uh, guarantee scheme would help us very much. Currently, already BGK 
is guaranteeing uh, new 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 limits, new credit limits issued by the banks. Uh, we, as a Polish factoring association, started to talk with VGK also to include factoring with the scheme. Uh, well, the beginnings were very promising, but we still don't have, let's say, uh, final decision. But uh, if factoring would be included, that would be a big, big boost for factoring industry because we could finance whole supply chain of the clients from the purchase. Uh, of, of the goods from the supplier to the final sales of the of the clients and this is monitored on uh, per, per invoice uh, basis so it's much much uh, safer compared to to credit so we still finger crossed that uh, that that factoring will be included in this uh, in the stream mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if i would i would like to uh, add something to to what pavel sure. said sure yeah, okay. Um, yeah, from the beginning of, of uh, let's say, lockdown, we, we, we observed some um, businesses, industries which perform better in, in this difficult uh, uh, both market and, uh, and economic environment. And of course, we, 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 um, we paid great uh, deal of importance to, to to the KYC process, for example, for, for existing clients. Uh, we try to spend even more uh, time on, on higher risk transactions in order to, I would say, um, provide quality financing uh, consciously and properly. And generally speaking, uh, the industries that have suffered most from, from the lockdown seem, uh, seem, in my opinion, quite obvious. Yeah, uh, These are all those businesses that couldn't normally operate or that couldn't pivot in a short time period, like accommodation, for example, restaurants, um, food services, Horeca, basically the whole Horeca. Um, and, and, and tourism, for example. Uh, however, at the same time, in contrast, we, uh, we have seen an industries um, such as, for example, production and sale of chemical products or courier services or e-commerce uh, as a whole um, have a very, very solid performance, uh, in my opinion. For example, we can see it in, at, at ING, thanks to Imoye Payment Gateway, uh, where the turnover of merchants trading online has increased several times since beginning of this year. So it, it sounds extremely great. Yes, uh, I actually also saw that UNIG launched also the program when you help SMEs, micros and SMEs, to open the internet uh, um, shop so to to open an online shop with you and with your this payment getaway so this uh, to move uh, part of the businesses to online yes that's that's, yes, that's cool. right mm -hmm. and carl what what actually are the tools uh, that can help banks to monitor the existing portfolio and to underwrite new customers in this these times mm -hmm. okay uh, when we think about now everything has changed yes but for financial institutions, factoring companies or banks, I think one thing remains the same. They need to take care of the quality of their uh, credit portfolio. Yeah? And I think one of the, the tools that can help is uh, early warning system, which monitors contract behavior on an ongoing basis, uh, detects contracts anomalies and passes them on the appropriate risk or monitoring or maybe recovery department. And as, as, as an example of this can be catching delays, for example, in payments uh, from individual contractors. And in the average payment delay increased from five to 10 days, uh, the contract operator will re receive a warning signal. Of course, it does not have to be the indicator that the operation with this uh, contractor should be terminated, yes? but it only indicates that the contractor is worth having a closer look at, yes, because it can prevent a situation uh, when the funds that need to be returned to the buyer uh, will never be uh, returned, yes. Usually the factor find out uh, about the customer's non-payment or other problems when the money does not come from for a long time. 
Yes, and I think it's better to prevent than cure, in my opinion. I think it's also worth to mention about early warning retention. Yes, the information that factor can or bank can use to avoid a customer living for other financial institutions. Here, the system will uh, catch um, a decreased activity on a contract, yes? And it doesn't have to mean, of course, that company is ready to change the provider or factoring or banking services because there are a lot of seasonal companies in the market, yes? But I think such information may come in handy in these difficult times, yes? Because the customers of early warning solutions um, are not only banks or factors, uh, they are mainly used by the customers of these institutions who receive inf information wherever a given customer is solvent and whether it's worth selling them uh, the goods with uh, the freight pay uh, payment date. Yes? And as we are talking about the new customers, I think one of those tools can be cooperation with insurance company. Uh, because knowledge about contractor or counterparty, for example, about the payment culture is very important. It's, uh, I think it can simply prevent from losing their money. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, we started to receive questions and actually uh, uh, the last one that I see here is about the digitalization, my favorite topic. So let's talk about the digitalization of factor and industry so as now you know the physical contact with the RMs and, and factoring specialists are limited so the companies that are providing a digital uh, factoring process will have an advantage on the market so Lukas I will address this question firstly to you and then to the rest of our panelists so as you and ING Poland implemented a fully digital process for invoice finance for micro customers so could you tell us uh, on the processes, how does it go and uh, we, are all the customers are going now through this process uh, in, uh, in the bank? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for, for this question. Uh, uh, the, the digitalization of the factoring sector is, is a must, yeah, in my opinion, as, as, as most companies uh, in, in the financial sector do, uh, especially among um, among um, offers uh, that target small companies. I'm pretty sure that the whole market will will follow um, this direction eventually, uh, because the ING invoice financing offer is dedicated to to, to small smaller companies. We had to focus from from the beginning on a fully digital process. Uh, this was the expectation of, of this segment. Um, the financing is to be available right away, or all packed uh, in smooth online process with transparent terms uh, and, and uh, let's say, without um, unnecessary formalities. Uh, the client should be able to conduct transactions both on the desktop, in the office, uh, but at the same time on a tablet or, or a smartphone while on holiday with his family, for example. Uh, hence, um, once we implemented the service, the goal was uh, straightforward for us. The whole process from registration uh, through granting of new limits of funding uh, to the repayment of funds is to be fully digital. And what's more, um, in the NPS survey we did at the end uh, of last year, uh, our clients appreciate the most the, uh, the intuitive process, uh, the simplicity of applying for, for higher limits and, and fast found transfer. And obviously we are aware of, uh, of the areas for improvement and are working on daily basis to satisfy our clients and, and to meet, let's say, their uh, expectation and demands. Yes, and uh, as, as far as I know, so this uh, uh, product is available both on mobile application and uh, in online banking as well. I mean, is it, in, is it integrated with online banking and mobile banking? This is my first uh, question here. Or should a customer log in on a separate application? And here is also at one the question about QYC. So, Lukas, if you can add here a bit uh, to, to, to your answer on this question. Yes. 
for ING clients, it's an internal process. So within one, let's say, a website or mobile application, clients do everything. Yeah, I mean, every, every kind, every part of the processes. Uh, for clients, external clients, which hasn't uh, a banking account at ING, it's, uh, it's, it's an, let's say, separate um, application, separate website with separate credentials, login and, and, and uh, password uh, to this. And what was the second question? Uh, KYC, yeah? Sorry? Yes, yes, correct. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Mm. I would say, um, as the vast majority of ING um, invoice uh, clients are uh, INGB clients uh, uh, as well, so we can rely on information uh, that the bank has collected re regarding the KYC and IML processes. So during the uh, ING invoice financing uh, registration process, the, cli the client agrees uh, to the to the transfer of data to the bank, uh, so we can uh, benefit from from the knowledge we already have uh, in uh, in the ING group. So um, uh, and so with reference to uh, anti money laundering, um, we check individuals and companies associated with uh, high risk countries, for example, uh, by industry and and registration documents. Um, um, uh, we check what product or service is an invoice item. For example, we verify contractors in, in various lists, uh, black, gray, uh, whatever, so on and so forth. And uh, where we get information from several institutions and external database providers. And finally, finally we look um, we look at uh, uh, we look up at STER. STER, STER is a uh, IT system of the Polish clearing house uh, developed to prevent uh, tax frauds. Yes, yeah, so it's very, uh, very helpful uh, solution. And and to summarize, I would say there is no single ideal tool that would um, organize uh, access to to information about enterprises. But there are a number of uh, let's say complementary tools uh, that are Worth using combined. Mm -hmm. And here is the, is a customer new to a bank. Uh, does the process so is the process also fully digital, or the or customer need to show up at the branch, let's say at least once. One hundred fully digital. <laughs> okay, thanks, uh, Pavel. How do you see the um, here this trend of the market on the digitalization? So, what is your view on that, and and what is your strategy in BNP Paribas here? Mm -hmm. well, we more like corporate and SME concentrated uh, factor. So, in this case, the clients or the or the demand is more like on a day to day basis cooperation with the clients, and this process, this cooperation on on daily basis is fully digital right now. There is no physical documents at all. Uh, but I can definitely see that uh, thanks, let's call it, to coronavirus, that we can still make a lot, especially with SME clients in uh, onboarding process, uh, process. By onboarding, I mean uh, KYC process signed the, the, the contract with the, with the client. Uh, before the coronavirus, the, Digital uh, signature wasn't very popular. That that was uh, uh, a, a, a bit of a problem um, with uh, developing the the digital uh, processes. Right now, I can see that definitely even more small com uh, small companies, smaller companies uh, are becoming more and more familiar with the uh, with the digital signature. We also, as a bank. Um, I became the shareholder of uh, fintech called Authenti. Uh, this is the fin fintech which have a, let's say alternative way of uh, authentication of the of the clients. Uh, so this is alternative, very very interesting way how to deal with uh, with signing the con confirming the contracts uh, without uh, digital signature, which uh, which all uh, which is uh, which has been. Uh, obstacle till now. 
definitely. Uh, but on the other hand, if we talk about digitalization, uh, I must say that partially me, but also main, most of the corporate clients are a bit old school in one, one part of the process, which is uh, introduction meeting, I would say, because uh, still, as I mentioned at the beginning, factoring is for most of our clients is still a new service. They didn't use it uh, before. So uh, if I have face to face meeting, still I can feel, let's call it what, what the client feel. And on the other hand, uh, over these last two weeks, uh, especially corporate clients are were let's say very reluctant to, to meet or to start new negotiations because they said, okay, but see, you know, it's too important decision for me uh, to, to, to start these negotiations without uh, knowing each other. Yeah. But totally different story, of course, with micro clients in this, uh, in this segment, uh, we already started to do video meetings and that looks like really perfect fit. Yeah. Because they are, more willing to do it that the micro clients are more willing to to have a, a teleconference or video meeting here yeah? but the the bigger clients becomes the harder to start to negotiation with the clients or the introduction meetings uh, without physical meetings so i would say it, it really a lot depends from on the segment of the clients that we talk to at the time Mm -hmm. I will comment here additionally about the attentive for their attendees from, from, from other countries than Poland. So they have this actually the fintech, um, which is, uh, which is doing digital signatures and certified, let's say, on, on Polish market with this. And this is actually the first case here in Central Eastern Europe when three banks invested in one fintech. So three banks in Poland, this is BNP, Paribas, uh, Alior Bank and Pikao BP. So invested in one fintech to use this solution for their customers, for the digital signatures, but also to, in, to the internal procedures of the bank um, as well. So this is a very good uh, example actually of cooperation with fintechs here. So, and, and Karol, how do you see here the, the market? What is your feel? Mm -hmm. I think that the pandemic has shown how quickly individual financial institutions can adapt to changing conditions, yes? Because I think just a few months ago, opening a bank account online without leaving home uh, seemed unreachable, yes? And now almost every bank has implemented uh, such solution. So, in my opinion, the next step uh, will be signing a new contract uh, with uh, companies online without visiting the bank. Mm, this approach was used by fintechs, uh, I think, a few years ago. And I think, of course, banks uh, have different procedures and many requirements imposed by uh, financial regulators, yes. Uh, however, mm, to compete in this market, when the speed of uh, providing a given service, example, factoring, loan, um, insurance, is very important, uh, I think banks must catch up with fintechs and allow their clients to go through this loan process without leaving home, because I think it will be standard in a few years. And, uh, in this case, time to cash is very important, yes. Mm, the faster you can provide cash to your uh, client, I think the better opportunity you have to gain more clients. That's my opinion. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. So I will start reading questions that we are receiving here. So the first, so to continue the topic of digitalization, there are two questions. So. For, first from Marcella, was the acceleration more active in countries like Poland or it was around all other countries affected by COVID-19? Well, um, I comment shortly from my side that the, here in Central Eastern Europe, actually Poland is one of the leaders, uh, I would say, in the acceleration of digital processes in terms of if we talk about SME customers. Uh, for for individuals for in retail segment here um, markets are more 
faster, let's say, in implementation, in implementing such uh, solutions. And if you talk about business customers, I would say that yes, Poland is uh, one of the leaders even yeah, in, in, in Warsaw, the, even before the, 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 the COVID, before the pandemic. And this is uh, and one of the reasons why, which I um, consider uh, uh, very important is the number of uh, active SME customers. So here in Poland, for example, this is uh, around 2 million active micro and SME customers, while in neighbors' countries, these numbers are um, seven times less. So that's why I think that just because there is a market for the for the SME customers, so the, the best here are innovative, um, and the, um, more innovative, let's say, than, than in the neighbor countries. But I think that actually this will change, it can change, uh, hopefully, the, the nearest uh, year or two. So, um, and maybe I will read also the, the next question and uh, let uh, our panelists to, to answer. Do you have digital onboarding processes for new customers? As far as I understand, all processes are digital for current customers. However, the real challenge on the table is for a customer acquisition. Well, I know ING Bank has. So, Lukash, please comment firstly on on this on this question. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the, basically, uh, the registration process for external clients and internal client. I mean, existing clients, existing ING clients. It's, it's, it's the same path, yeah. So, so registration process is made through 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 the website. The customer gives us basic uh, company and user data, mm, confirms uh, email address, attaches scan or picture of identity card, and and provides um, an authorization uh, transfer for for one Polish zloty from from the company account, and and that's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pavel, would you would you comment here? Yeah, with uh, SME and corporate clients, I would say it's maybe it's not like it's not digital, but it's more like remote. Yeah, so uh, uh, the contract is signed with the with the digital signature. Then the clients gain the access to the to the factoring system, and uh, we start onboarding, of course, remotely with the with the clients. There is no let's say. Um, integrated uh, tool for all of these operations. So it's not like with, uh, let's say, per invoice uh, factoring companies, uh, but it's more so I would call it more like remote. On daily basis, then yes, uh, afterwards, the uh, whole process is digital. Everything is, is, uh, is going on within a factoring uh, application. Uh, that clients has access to. There is no sort of no physical papers, anything like that required from the client. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will add here about the, the online onboarding and the customer acquisition, if you talk in general uh, on, the, on the banking market here. So actually we have here in Poland several banks that went a bit one step uh, uh for whether or earlier meeting meeting the customer earlier at the stage of business registration so several banks in poland implemented that their customers so this is the entrepreneur if we talk about sole entrepreneurs so they can register their business uh, via the website of the banks and then the the um, onboarding is uh, done at Few, fully digitally online and then the banking account is also opened uh, automatically so this is so we have some examples here for um, for such um, uh, solutions um uh, carol if you uh, can comment on some tools i think that the tools so the technology exists on the market to to proceed with this uh, yes i think what Lukas said is very important the video verification because Right now, most people have uh, smartphones, yes? So uh, taking picture of identity card or passport and uh, then taking selfie, I think it's uh, easy to, to go right now, yes? It, uh, I think a few years uh, uh, ago, it was much more difficult. But right now, when uh, the smartphone era began, uh, it's easier and it's faster and it can be implemented easier, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So the next question I will address to Pavel firstly and then to Lukash. What is the current approach to the reverse factoring for the micro customers and what is the average price? And how does the situation look like in terms of foreign uh, suppliers? 
-hmm. Well, to be to be honest, if we talk about uh, factoring companies, there is no approach at all. Yes, yeah? so do, uh, we then don't really have uh, offer of reverse factoring for for micro clients from say risk management issues. That's the that's the main reason. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, factoring would be included in the uh, BGK bank scheme, that would definitely would be a boost also for uh, for reverse factoring in this uh, in this matter. I know that we do have a fintech on Polish market like you know pay later or something like that. But if we talk about let's say companies who say they are they doing factoring, um, I haven't really heard uh, about. You know, potential offered uh, in in uh, in reverse factoring. Uh, well, apart from that, if we talk about the SME and corporates, uh, there can be foreign suppliers. There's that's uh, that, that that's not a problem. Uh, of course, there is a, let's say partially. Uh, if the cost has to be bared by the supplier, we have to do kind of supplier due diligence process. But it's quite simple and uh, and then. And easy, so so it's it's not a problem. But but definitely there is a space on the market for uh, reverse factoring for uh, for micro clients. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, my my question to you also: Do you, do you finance within your product the uh, invoices in euro, let's say, or other foreign currency, or this is just in in Polish zloty? Uh, no, we finance uh, uh, invoices only in Polish Zloty. Yeah, however, we have, let's say, uh, financing euro invoices in euro in, in, on our backlog. Yes, yeah? so we are thinking about it, and maybe till the end of the year we will introduce to the our offer. Okay, I see. Thanks. The next uh, question will be for Carol. <laughs> what software do you use, uh, uh, or do you, uh, or can be used? Well, I, I, I will reward a bit. It can be used in the banks for factoring. Uh, is it uh, native or an external developer? And this is probably also to just a short comment from from Lukas and Pavel as well. Which factoring software do you use? Uh, yes, the software can be web-based or cloud-based uh, uh, solution, of course. And if it comes to uh, software on phones, it can be uh, native. So I think the question answers the, the self, yes. So these solutions, can, of course, be, can be native. Uh, they can be uh, uh, cloud-based and web-based in this. Uh, I think nothing to say more here. Mm -hmm. uh, Lukas and Pavel, would you shortly comment here which solution or which software do you use? So this is an in-house or you cooperate with some uh, providers? I don't hear Lukas, so I just looking whether he's saying or something or not. <laughs> okay, I will start. As far as I know, I guess ninety-nine percent of the market are using external developers. Uh, I know some, let's say, cases of uh, using na na uh, native uh, systems of the banks for factoring, but it's it's. That's not very success stories, let's say. So, so I, I, I wouldn't recommend it yet because factoring is, I must say, very specific compared to the whole core banking system. So, and this is definitely the direction of, of Polish market. Uh, most of us use external suppliers, and I guess all of us use Polish external uh, external suppliers, IT suppliers. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Lukas? Um, uh, it's it's uh, hard to say in, in one sentence. However, uh, we use a lot of, uh, let's say, um, technologies um, from our external partners, I would say. Uh, however, we have a lot of uh, many, plenty of uh, solutions um, in, or, or from our ing in-house uh, development uh, development line so i would say we have a uh, internal and external provider solutions it depends uh, of course um, we have for example um, database provider solution uh, and there are um, external companies uh, only mm -hmm. i see okay 
Okay, so probably the last uh, question will be to to the whole panel to comment uh, to comment shortly. I will come back here to questions. So yeah, so during the current crisis, the payments are delayed from the uh, debtors. So what approach banks or financial institutions in Europe are taken? And the next question, which is uh, connected with this, will the factoring industry be alternative to the bank financing during this period? So, Lukas, maybe we'll start with you as you are here on the on the full screen. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for the question. Um, in microfactoring, uh, the first symptoms of of uh, declining client liquidity uh, were felt very quickly, uh, basically from 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 the first days of of March. So, so the very first ones. Um, Unlike colleagues from large factoring business, uh, we observed which industries uh, uh, perform um, better in this difficult market and economic environment. So um, certainly we, we took, a, let's say, sm small, um, small steps on our side to, to tighten uh, the process of, of granting new limits. And, um, and of course, we have less than 2% of uh, clients who, uh, let's say, who which we deferred their payments. So it's about 1.6, as I well remember. So uh, we try to be flexible in these hard times for, for every small companies and so entrepreneurs. Um, and that's all. Okay, thank you. Pavel, would you comment here? Mm -hmm. well, uh... I mentioned this uh, this topic. So, if there is a delay in the payment, on expect or expected delay in the payments, uh, our client could apply for the for the postponement of the due date of uh, of such invoice. And we agreed for that so be, because okay, we treat it as a, a bit of a frozen situation rather than uh, expecting that this client will not pay anymore. And uh, the, the interesting story is that at the beginning of April, I guess, the, uh, the sum of uh, delayed payments on our portfolio rise by 10%. But uh, in two last weeks of May, it came back to the standard situation. So, uh, so we, I, I wouldn't say that we have a, a very big or dramatic impact on, uh, on payments from the debtors. Uh, right now, we have a situation that we have more incoming payments than than financing new invoices. So it's, it's it doesn't look like we have a kind of a backlog of uh, of payments between the companies. That doesn't look like that. But going to the second question, because we as also being part of the banking group, we could see that as uh, in March, as clients were using factoring uh, very much. Also so the outstandings with the credit lines went up. So it looks like the, the, the companies gathered the cash and now they, they're using this cash to, ca to pay uh, their liabilities, let, also uh, towards us. But on the other hand, that also gives us an opportunity of growth. Yeah? Because once the new sales uh, will start, and it's already, it's already happening, but I would say it's still 30% less than it was before the coronavirus. Uh, then as, as the clients already utilized the credit limits, then they will move to factoring. Yeah? And, and I was working in other bank in, in 2009. And that was uh, in this sense a bit similar situation because uh, there was a limited access to credit that the lines were used. And if, uh, as we uh, moved on, so the, the economy moved on then the clients were switched to factoring because it was much easier to get finance from factoring compared to to credit lines so, so the, yes i i would say that it's uh, it always was and uh, and i hope it still will be very good alternative to uh, as uh, as we will go on and move with uh, new sales of our clients mm -hmm. yes, yes 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 indeed yeah yeah of course if my way, if I uh, if I am away, mm, the factoring industry, um, as as Pavel uh, uh, mentioned um, just a second before, 
um, um, and just like the lending or, or leasing industry is sure to, to, to face a, a slowdown. Yeah, definitely. Everybody agree. Um, however, it will be deeper, in my opinion, um, uh, um, regarding the larger, uh, larger business, factoring business. Uh, I mean, um, from the point of view of, 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 of managing such a portfolio, the, the micro factoring segment is more flexible, in my opinion. So I would say decisions are made faster and, and it's much easier to, to adapt to, um, to the changing market environment. So, so the recovery uh, should be visible uh, in micro factoring as a first step. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Karl, would you would you close this this panel? Yes, I think I agree with Pavel and Lukas because, uh, in my opinion, factoring will be the most uh, interesting thing right now because the banks uh, have safer financing product. Yes, they can cooperate with insurance companies, so the money they lend is much more safer. Yes, because we have natural payment resourcement from contractors on counterparties, yes. And what, uh, for example, insurance company can do is can take the risk of this payment, yes. And the knowledge about every counterparty, I think, is is a uh, clue here, yes. And the div diversification, because, for example, if you have 10 counterparties on the one agreement, uh, the risk that all uh, will bankrupt is, I think, little. And that's my that's my opinion that the factoring will be will be the product the banks will want to sell uh, most. Yes, hope so that the industry will see an acceleration. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have no questions. So thank you all our attendees that stayed to to the very end. And thank you to whole panel uh, for your contribution. So thank you, Carol, Pavel, and Lukas. Thank, thank you very much. And and see you next time online. Thank you thank and you. bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.